the fourth screen. Yeah, I am in full screen. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, sure. Yeah. I'll go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm starting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Welcome to my topic. Fine needle aspiration cytology of palpable breast lump, a study of 1778 cases. I am Muhammad Jillur Rahman, speaking from Chittagong, Bangladesh. Uh, introduction. Breast carcinoma is the most common malignant neoplasm and the leading cause of death from cancer in women with more than 1 million cases occurring worldwide annually. However, in some regions of the world like North America, Western Europe and Australia, breast cancer mortality is finally beginning to fall presumably because of the combined action of earlier diagnosis and improved therapy. A large number of patients in Bangladesh have been suffering from breast cancer. Each year the number of patients is increasing. Because of existing social circumstances, female patients are hesitant to be examined by the clinicians for breast lump. So the patients are reporting in advanced stage of malignancy. Nowadays, efficacy of palpable breast lump shows a very high sensitivity specificity and accuracy. Affinacy can provide, can prevent unnecessary surgery also. Affinacy could provide a diagnosis with only 10 to 30 percent of the cost of surgical biopsy. 95 percent accuracy in preoperative diagnosis of mammary cancer by clinico-cytological combination was reported in a study. As FNSC became more reliable in diagnosing malignancy, the use of frozen section histology had been reduced by about 80%. But erroneous diagnosis is more common with FNSC than with histopathology. Screening by mammography, ultrasonography and clinical breast examination may decrease breast cancer mortality. The present study is in intended to observe the frequency distribution of different types of breast lesions among the females of this region, to observe the age incidence of different types of breast lesions, to observe the size, site, type and metastasis of malignant breast lumps by FNS. Methods. FNSC of breast lumps were done from consecutive 1778 females in a period of three years of time from 1st January 2009 to 31st December 2011 in a private cytohisto laboratory of Chittagong in Bangladesh. Primary cause of these patients were unknown. Aspiration was made by using 10 cc disposable syringe and the smears were stained by Papaniculo method. If any axillary limb node was palpable, that was also selected for FNS. All the stained slides were examined under light microscope. Data was recorded regarding the age of the patient, side of the breast, side of the breast involvement, size of the lesion, cytological diagnosis, and presence of metastasis in case of malignancy. Result. The patients are from 14 to 86 years of age with a mean of 33.6 years. 21 to 30 years group comprises most, that is 678, 38.13% of the patients, followed by 31 to 40 age group. 428 patients, 24.7%. Among the type of the lesions, fibroadenoma showed the highest incidence, followed by carcinoma and then fibrocystic disease. That is, you can see 
that benign neoplasm fibroadenoma 508 cases 28.57 percent second the carcinoma malignant lymph uh, neoplasms 252 cases 14.17 percent and followed by fibrocystic disease 210 cases 11.81 percent Inflammatory lesions include abscess, chronic mastitis, granulomatous mastitis, and fat necrosis. The present study found 117, 116, that is 6.52% granulomatous mastitis. Of them, 50% were non caseating granulomatous inflammation, and rest 50% caseating granuloma consists. 26.72 percent saturation association and Jill Nelson stain of the suspected tuberculosis cases was was done and found 12 cases were positive for acid first bacilli. Case distribution among the age groups is shown in table 4. Highest number of fibroadenoma that is 218 was in the age group 21 to 30 years and less than 20 years group was seconding. Maximum of carcinoma 82 and 59 cases were in the age group 31 to 40 and 41 to 50 years respectively. This is the table showing case distribution among the age groups and we can see that the majority of the fibroadenoma are at 21 to 30 years age group and carcinoma was at 82 that is at the 31 to 40 years age group. Statistics of age in years among different diagnoses shows that malignant cases show mean age 44.38 years with a median 42 ranging from 18 to 86 years and the mean age of total 1778 cases is 33.61 and ranging from 14 to 86 years. Side of the breast involvement almost in all types of diseases either left or right side involvement were nearly equal. Involvement of both breasts was seen in only 3.4 percent patients. Among the 1778 cases we found 252 malignant cases. 251 of them are dark cell carcinoma and only one was lobular carcinoma. Most of them were less than 2 cm in size and majority of the cases were found in 31 to 50 years age groups. 116 of these cases showed palpable axillary lymph nodes and only 26 of them showed metastasis. And the mean lesional size of all the 1778 breast lumps were 4.3 plus minus 2.7 centimeter whereas mean lesional size of 252 carcinoma cases are 2.3 plus minus 1.2 centimeter. Size of the malignant lesions according to age group shows that 64 cases are at the less than 2 cm size and remaining in the 31 to 40 years age group. Regarding axillary lymph node status in carcinoma patients, we found 116 cases of palpable axillary lymph nodes among the 252 carcinoma patients and 26 that is 10.32 percent shows presence of metastasis whereas rest 90 were found to be reactive lymph nodes. Now discussion. Regarding age range present study shows 14 to 86 years age range with a mean of 33.6 years. The age range of the present study is almost nearly equal to the studies of the third world countries and the lower age range from the study of United Kingdom is maybe due to 
lower life expectancy rate of Bangladesh. Regarding side of the breast involvement, we found almost equal involvement of either right or left side, but Rajendra observed a deviation from our results with a little predominance of the right breast, 51.4 percent. This might be an incidental finding. It requires very large group population based study to find out any significant difference. Regarding malignant cases, there is also similar uh, proportion between right and left breast, but Rupam et al. showed much higher malignant lesions in right breast. This a bit higher incidence may be due to smaller number of cases. Regarding inflammation of the breast, this study found a total of 21.15 percent cases. This result is supported by the findings of Pakistan by Bukhari et al. and Nepal by Rajendra. They found 20 percent and 22.6 percent respectively. Though the finding of Nimagini and Yaqub from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia showed a little higher incidence, 26.5 percent. Regarding granuloma, present study found 6.52 percent granuloma. The major difference of this study with the others is that we found a bit larger number of granulomatous mastitis cases, which are reported very low in other studies, 2.3 percent by Bukhari et al., and none by Radendro. The difference from the study of Bukhari et al is maybe due to their smaller sample size. Regarding suppuration with granulometers mastitis, we found 26.72 percent suppuration. Gary et al. in 2004 reported 31 percent suppuration, whereas Lacambra et al. reported 29, that is 46.77 percent cases of tuberculosis mastitis among the total 62 cases, which also included associated subpopulation. In 23, that is 1.29 percent cases, serous fluid mixed with blood came out on aspiration, and in all the cystic masses, re-aspiration of any residual mass is recommended, and even in the absence of a residual mass. Reaspiration from the wall of the cyst yielded fairly cellular smears with more likelihood of variable uh, of viable epithelial cells. Present study shows much lower fibrocystic disease in comparison with others. In the study of Rajendra, we can see fibrocystic disease comprises 41.2 percent with an average age of 31 years. Fibrocystic disease also consists the highest number, 49 percent of cases, in the other study by Pradhan and Bhakal. Bukhari et al. found 21.17 fibrocystic disease in their study of 425 cases. The possible reason of difference may be that it is not a population-based study, so we may not get the exact scenario. Besides, fibrocystic disease presents with ill-defined mass, with no pain or less complex. Female patients may feel reluctant to seek consultation. Again, the total number of cases of the present study is much higher than the other three studies, which may also contribute to some extent to the discrepancies. Fibroadenoma was a major cause of the breast lump in these studies. This finding is similar to the findings of Ahmed et al. and near similar to the findings of Rajendra and Mayun et al. Again, Bukhari et al. and Pradhan and Dhakal showed much lower incidence of fibroadenoma. But the higher incidence of fibroadenoma in the present study than the last two studies may be due to increased awareness among young women in, their, in this country. Again, our study 
shows much lower rate than Rahman et al., which was 38.3% that may be explained by their smaller sample size. On the other hand, it was not a population-based study, rather sampled consecutively from the patients attended in the lab for FNSC with complaints of breast cancer. Mayo et al. found the average age of fibroadenomas was 16 years in Nigeria. But the present study found most of the cases in the age group 21 to 30 years. This demands further investigation to find out whether there is any cause of this age difference in relation to inhabitation or ethnicity. A total number of 20 cases, that is 1.12 percent of atypical duct hyperplasia were found and advised for histopathology. This study also reports 28, that is 1.6% cases of suspicious for malignant cells. Pradhan and Dhakal reported 2.3% and if at all 3.8% and Ahmed at all 2.5% suspicious for malignancy. Bukhari and Akhtar and Bukhari at all found respectively 11.42% and 8.4% suspicious for malignancy. 9% of atypical or suspicious for malignancy were reported by Rosa et al. from US, and 3.3% atypical cases were noted by Yoke et al. from Hong Kong. These patients needed biopsy for confirmation of malignancy, and cytological atypia comprises nuclear pleomorphism, discohesiveness, irregular nuclear contours, irregular chromatin pattern, hyperchromatia, and higher nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. For practical purposes, atypical dark hyperplasia and low-grade DCIS are better categorized as proliferative breast disease with atypia or borderline lesions. Since all of these lesions will require excisional biopsy. Considering malignant cases in female breast, we found 252, that is 14.17% carcinoma cases. Among them, 251 were dark cell carcinoma and only one was lobular carcinoma. Previous study in this country by Rupom et al. showed 13.74% of malignant cases in FNAC. Pradhan and Dhakal also reported 15.5% malignant cases among their 2,246 cases, which are near about our study. But there is much higher reference from Bukhari et al., Ahmed et al., and Mayun et al., showing 31, 30.5, and 40% respectively. Though if at all, and Bukhari and Akhtar found near results, but their total number of cases are relatively smaller. This reflects less awareness of women to attend health facilities with any smaller breast lump, but an ugly looking or very painful lesions. In the present study, 31 to 40 age group showed highest number of malignant cases, that is 82, 32.54% and 41 to 50 years group showed 59 cases that is 23.41% and we may conclude the majority 55.95% of malignant cases of the uh, patients found in the middle age group from 31 to 50 years. Majority of the patients, 65.8% in the age group 31 to 50 years were also observed by Sandhu et al. in India. Rupam et al. also found highest frequency in 36 to 45 years of age group. However, reports from the Western world shows that female breast carcinoma is predominantly seen in the 5th and 6th decade. So, we also conclude with Sandhu et al. that mean age of our female breast cancer presents, pre female breast cancer patients was found to be lower compared to the western world with an average difference of one decade. 
early age of menopause in Indian females in comparison to their western counterparts has been observed in the past. The earlier published reports also show that the risk of breast carcinoma increases with increasing age of menopause, possibly because the women, uh, women are exposed to hormones for a longer duration. During aspiration, we found 116 of 252 breast carcinoma with palpable axillary limb nodes. 10.32% of them showed features of metastasis of dark cell carcinoma and there was no scope of this study to find out any other metastatic foci. And this finding of 10.32% is similar to the study of Sapino et al. They found 16.44% but Sinha et al. found much higher rate 45.76%. The number of inadequate spirits were 248, 13.94 and inadequacy reported by Hitchcock et al. and Park and Ham as 20% and 25.3% respectively and it reduces the sensitivity of cytology. Bukhari et al. reported 20% inadequacy and reduce the number of number by repeating up to twice. Insufficient cases require re-evaluation of clinical and radiological findings as well. And the, uh, as well as adequate follow-up mostly in case of palpable breast abnormalities. Now conclusion. FNSC serves as a rapid economical and reliable tool for the diagnosis of palpable breast lesions. Number of women attending with breast lump has been increased, reflecting increased awareness. Fibroadenoma is the most common lesion in this study and is found mostly in the age group of 21 to 30 years. Caseating granulomatous mastitis due to tuberculosis is increasing in this region. However, Malignancy was detected as the second common lesion. Breast carcinoma patients are at the lower age of one decade than that of Western women. These are the references we used in this study. And now these are the photomicrograph showing saturative inflammation. Saturative inflammation, this is a granulomatous mastitis. This is a granuloma associated with suppuration. This photomicrograph shows features of fibrocystic disease. This is also a photomicrograph of fibrocystic disease. This is a case of galactosil. This is a case of fibroadenoma. Fibroadenoma. Suspicious cells. Suspicious cells. This is a case of dark cell carcinoma. This is also another case of dark cell carcinoma and this is a case of lobular carcinoma and thank you all with an invitation to the first international CMC PET CMA going to be held in October in Chittagong, Bangladesh. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have a question? We can unmute your headset, you can talk to speakers in real time. Is there any question, please? Dr. Drew, Dr. Drew, you can you can talk to the speakers. Hello. Uh, Dr. Drew. Hello. 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 Yes, go ahead.
Hello, Dr. Kelly. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm clear. You can hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I am hearing. I have a question. Does HPV have any bearing on why there is a lower average age of cancer, particularly in Bangladesh? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, we don't uh, have any other uh, study, uh, uh, but many of our study in Bangladesh shows that the, the age incidence is one decade lower than the Western patient in case of breast malignancy. But uh, our uh, prediction is that it is due to lower uh, uh, age of menopause in our uh, people, in our female, uh, their, their menopause becomes, uh, menopause starts early uh, in relation to the western female. Do you know, a, yeah. do, you, do you know if uh, uh, human papillomavirus or HPV is high in the Bangladesh pop population, and has anybody looked to see if what yeah, the percent? Uh, we have a human, a high uh, incidence of human papilloma viruses, but it, it was not a study for patients uh, in our country yet. And uh, 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 as you have raised this question, uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, have a trial uh, for this, uh, for the malignant cases with HPV. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Tu, do you also have questions? Yeah, any more questions? So here I have one question from attendees. Is are there other factors collected for these patients? Uh, I'm yeah, this type of type of these questions. Are there other factors collected for these patients? Atherosclerosis. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I, I don't understand what you have uh, said. Um, can you write the message? Okay. Dr. Du, do you have questions? Okay. Okay, if no more, we move next to the speaker. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Patricia. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear. Yes. You can hear me, Grace. Yes, Mercury, please. Okay. Okay. Can I show your slide? Yeah. What we do? Okay. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, will I start? Yes, you can start. Okay. So good morning from Dublin, Ireland. Um, I'm delighted to be presenting the work of myself and uh, Professor Michael Duffy on the work that we're doing on Adams as new therapeutic targets for breast cancer. So just to give you an overview of uh, today's presentation, um, I'll give you an introduction to the Adams family of proteases with a specific focus on Adams.